I've just caught someone um, dumping soil in my back garden. The plot thickens. Right, resources UK water uh, for the 2019 paper two. Okay, then we're going to start with the changing demand for water. On average in the UK, people use 150 litres of water every day. And every day people are demanding more water than ever before. Now, most of this is controlled by that concept that people in the UK are demanding a higher quality of life and therefore use more water in the pursuit of that higher uh, quality of life. So let's go for our examples. Um, if people have more disposable income, which they do in the UK, this means an increase in households having labor saving appliances, such as your dishwashers and washing machines. And that means that uh, you save your leisure time, but also you use a large amount of water. In the UK, people are entitled to four weeks of holiday uh, every year. Uh, and as a result, people have more leisure time now than they did 20, 30 years ago. Uh, this has led to an increased demand for water for uh, leisure cities, such as golf courses, but also you could say outdoor swimming pools as well. The third one I will talk through, um, improvements in personal hygiene. People are now advised and think it's com com uh, common theme in society, I suppose, to um, shower or bath daily, as opposed to 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago where people would have simply had a, a weekly bath and uh, therefore people are demanding more water. Now the other ones that I will put up on the board um, there are the other ones that you could uh, use uh, within the uh, GCSE regarding a population increase, car ownership increasing, industrial production increasing and also rising temperatures there at the bottom. So any of those bullet points would explain why people are demanding more water in the UK. And the demand is increasing on a very already strained supply. But there's going to become a very confusing part now. The confusing part is this. Despite the fact that demand has increased because of those bullet points, the actual per person use has decreased. And now what I mean by that decrease is that despite the fact that people are demanding more, they actually use less per person than they have before. It's a declining trend in the UK. Now, 2018 was a bit of an exception due to the heat wave because people use more water there because they are dehydrated and there's more leisure activities like barbecues ongoing. So people use more water for ice cubes or for filling up uh, paddling pools. But actually, there's a general decline in the UK's use of water. The reason for that is despite the added demand, we, uh, the technology has got so much more efficient now uh, and therefore actually um, is saving more water. So, for example, toilets and um, uh, dishwashers, washing machines now use far less water than they had done 10, 15 years ago. And therefore, actually, the amount of water we use person is decreasing. OK, and supply of water in the UK. This is a rainfall map of the UK. Blue being higher, uh, brown slash black being lowest. In terms of water that people can use, there are two sources for human use of water, which are surface stores, aka rivers, lakes, reservoirs, etc., and groundwater stores, aka aquifers, and simply groundwater itself. Now, both of these stores are recharged by rainwater probably easier to imagine uh, a river for this obviously rainwater can fall straight in that's called channel precipitation but it could also uh, land on the surface and then through surface runoff run into a river or alternatively slightly more complicated it could rain infiltrate into the soil and then through flow into the river however groundwater stores are also recharged by uh, rainwater when the rain hits the surface infiltrates into the soil and then percolates into the groundwater Let's have a little look at this map though. Um, why are we interested in this map? Well, I'll tell you because both sources of water are recharged by rainwater. So where there's more rainwater, you can expect there to be more water available for people to use. It's wetter in the west of the UK and Highlands. Bobbin Moor being a great example, uh, local to you, about 1500 millimetres plus of rainfall per year, uh, around about a thousand millimetres more than the southeast. The, co the cause of all this is that we have um, our southwest prevailing wind coming across the Atlantic, crashes into the hills, 
that warm, moist air is forced to rise. It cools, condenses, forming clouds. Those clouds get too heavy and precipitate, whereas then on the eastern side becomes the rain shadow as air then sinks down the other side of the hill and it means that uh, that air has less moisture in and warms up. So you get far less rainfall on the east. That's called relief rainfall. If you want to picture that on the map, if you look at the darker areas on the western side of the map, those are all area areas of hills. So we've got Bobbinmore, Dartmoor, the Welsh hills or Welsh valleys, I should say, the Scottish Highlands are all areas where um, warm moist air is forced to rise over hills, therefore cooling, condensing, etc. So that's where the supply of water is found. How about the demand for water? Now, in terms of water use, there are three general categories of water use. Domestic meaning at home, industrial, obviously to do with industry, and agriculture to do with farming. In the UK, as you can see, everything apart from 3% of our water use is uh, outside of agriculture, so industry and domestic. Cities therefore demand more water due to the fact there's a higher population for domestic use, as well as the fact that they are the centres of industry. So if we look at a population map of the UK, a choropleth map, um, what we can see is the red areas are the areas of highest population density. Areas of highest demand, therefore, are found in the southeast and the midlands of the UK. Now we're going to particularly uh, be interested in the southeast on the next slide. So what does all this mean? Well, the areas of highest demand, e.g. the southeast, are not the same as the areas with the highest supply. This leads to areas of deficit and surplus. Deficit defined there, not enough water for the demand. Surplus, more than the demanded amount of water. If we consider the UK, we end up with a map that looks like this. Green areas, there are a general surplus. Red areas, there are a general deficit. And white areas are pretty much in balance, which means the amount of water they need is the amount of water they have. As a general rule, the West and the Highlands have a water surplus because they have the highest supply but less demand, whereas the Southeast has a water deficit. It has the highest demand but the lowest supply. Now, hopefully, you lot are sitting there thinking, I can link the fact that a water deficit will impact on quality of life. That is a likely question you could be asked. What impact will a water deficit have on people? We've seen examples uh, in your time at Penrice of uh, hose pipe bans being put in place in the southeast. We've seen um, uh, the rationing of water um, through that, and therefore it reduces people's access to opportunities. So water deficit in the UK can have a big, big, big impact. One thing the example will not credit relating to the UK is that water deficit will kill people. That will not happen in the UK. In an LIC, yes, here, no. So what does all this mean? All of this has been building to the fact that the UK needs to manage its water. There are two options for managing a, a resource. You can either increase its supply in the places of a water deficit and or reduce the demand for water. So either you have to increase the supply in areas of deficit or reduce the demand for water again in areas of deficit. So we'll start with increasing the supply, and the three on the board here are small scale managements, either done by uh, local councils or alternatively by individual households. So the idea is, uh, we'll start with the water butt there in the top left hand corner. The water butt traps uh, rainwater. Rainwater essentially feeds into it and acts like a big bucket. That water, previously rainwater, would have obviously infiltrated into the soil, run off the surface, into rivers, and may have potentially ended up back in the sea. It means that that water couldn't have been used by people. However, if we trap that rainwater in those water butts that some of you probably have in your back garden, it means that water is available for use. Now, we're not going to be drinking that water in the UK, but we can use that water for uh, watering plants or uh, potentially washing cars uh, as, as, as example uses. Now, the idea here is that that does increase supply on the grounds that um, the rainwater that previously would have left the system you are now able to use. In addition, other sources of um, additional water are what we call grey water. Now, now grey water is water that can't be drunk because it has been contaminated in some way, but it doesn't mean that it's in 
it's not simply not usable anymore so a shower or a bath for example that water that you have after a bath or a shower obviously you wouldn't want to drink but you can use that water for other uses such as again watering plants or washing cars or potentially even flushing toilets uh, after doing the dishes and uh, any running taps as well is the concept that that water can be trapped and can be used again that would all increase the supply on the grounds that you're reusing water not taking new water out of um, the taps now the last one's the most complicated one uh, this is called groundwater recharge and it can't be done by uh, individual houses this needs to be done by um, local councils the concept is, at certain times of the year, even in the southeast, you will have more rainfall than others. For example, in the winter months, um, November, December, January, February, it's likely to be wetter in the UK at this time. With that in mind, what you do with that, what is a surplus of water, is if you trap that surplus of water, you can actually inject it into the groundwater source. So you can literally pump that water into the groundwater. You could even take this water directly out of rivers as well um, and you actually put it in what's called an aquifer under the ground. When then you have times where there's less rainfall, it's hotter, there's more demand for water, e.g. summer, you can then recover or extract that water back out of the ground for everyday use, therefore increasing the supply. Because what you've done essentially is you've taken water at one time of the year which would have been a surplus, couldn't use it all, to the area where you need it in a deficit by simply pumping it under the ground so it's there when you need it. Very clever strategy because that water will not evaporate. The sun in the summer won't evaporate, it's safe underwater, you can use it as and when you need it. So our three little methods there, the water butt in the top, grey water reuse in the top right and then groundwater management at the bottom. Okay then, the other idea, remember, was how can you decrease demand? Now, the two that we've already seen there, water butts, grey water, and also groundwater management, those are examples where you do actually decrease demand on the grounds that if you're using those supplies and reusing or recycling your water, it means you put less demand on the national supply. So what I mean by that is if you're not turning the tap on to get water, but you're using water from your water butt in the back garden, that therefore means you're demanding less water from um, your water board, e.g. Southwest Water. What the UK government has done is they have made um, awareness campaigns about these methods to try and get more people to use them. If more people use them, it means there's less demand on the essential water coming out of the tap. There are some other methods as well. That image there is a water meter. Now, the idea is these are uh, compulsory on every new build from the year 2000. And this in itself doesn't really stop you using water. But the idea is you look at this figure going up and go, oh, my days, this is going to cost me a lot of money at the end of the month. I need to stop using so much water. And as a result, people may well bath less and shower more. They may well make sure that when they're doing their teeth, they're turning the tap off because you can watch this dial turning as you're using water and you can quite literally think of it as money going out of your pocket. So a water meter is one way you can decrease demand. The second way is, uh, as already been mentioned, actually, it's uh, energy or not energy, sorry, efficient technology. Anyone's got a dual flush toilet in their house, the concept being that you shouldn't just push both buttons down both times, I'm sure we all do, but the idea is that you push one button for a smaller flush, uh, the second button for a bigger flush, and both of them together for like a turbo flush. The concept of putting that in a house means people demand less water because they use the um, smaller flush option, uh, and therefore they take less water from the actual national um, supply of water. As already mentioned, the white goods are far more water efficient over time. They've become um, more efficient and therefore use less water, e.g. water, um, sorry, I say water in cans then, e.g. Um, washing machines would be a good one. The idea with these are people are more likely to actually reduce their demand for water if there's no impact on their lifestyle. If, if it doesn't impact their quality of life, people will probably do it. So in terms of... Um, energy i keep saying energy efficient sorry water efficient washing machines you've still got a washing machine you don't have to wash your hands or wash your clothes by hand anymore 
you can still use the washing machine uh, therefore you save water and everyone's a winner really from that because the person washing the clothes in the washing machine still has their leisure time but actually they've demanded less water so people are far more likely to appreciate that method rather than the other ones for decreasing demand Okay, then the big part of this, this could be the six mark question, is the idea of a large scale transfer to solve this problem. Your case study for this is actually in Lesotho. It's the Katsi Dam that transfers water from uh, South Africa, no, sorry, from Lesotho to South Africa. However, we have similar plans in the UK, and this is one of them, a large scale transfer scheme from uh, area of surplus, which is Wales, to areas of deficit where uh, the southeast, and it would be done by a very large pipeline. What you need to be able to do for this exam, uh, you have to be able to give advantages and disadvantages of this type of scheme. Now, if you want any more of this, obviously go and use the Katsi Dam video because that is your case study. But just in case the exam board went after a UK example, we have this Wales to Southeast scheme. So the advantage of the scheme are the exact same as the ones for the Katsi Dam. It creates jobs when building. Now, if you put jobs, you always have to give a specific. It's going to create engineering jobs. It's going to create um, manufacturing pipe jobs. It's going to create jobs for um, environmental scientists who need to go and check the areas for, for wildlife. So a lot of jobs are going to be created when building this pipeline. And you get all those great so what's off that. The two linked really to what the question could be are that people in the southeast get to maintain their high quality of life. At the moment, living in an area of potential deficit, it means they might have to change their lifestyle by saving water, not using a hose pipe, etc. This water pipe means that they can actually continue that high quality of life that they expect living here because you have more water available. Furthermore, in the southeast, our industrial output can, can continue. Our factories won't run out of water. It means they can still um, cool their machinery. They can still um, uh, continue to make money and pay tax for the country. However, there are disadvantages as well we are going to end up with destruction of habitats. Again, when you put habitats, you must put an example. I've told you for the last two years that the sparrow hawk would come up in paper one, as it did. In this example, uh, if we're building a pipeline, we'll go after the dormouse, we'll go after the wolf spider. Economically, this is going to be an incredibly high cost. Building this pipeline is going to cost billions of pounds. And as a result of this, it, you could argue that actually getting people to use less water in the southeast would make far more sense. And the final section is this pipeline is going to tra travel all the way from Wales to the southeast. All of those villages and towns and potentially cities in the way, this big pipeline is going to, to change their view and it could well ruin the view for residents, reducing their comfort, reducing their quality of life. Hopefully that video all made sense regarding uh, UK water. Come and see us down in HA if there's anything you're not sure about.